matrix coding query is an amazing query to run in NVivo. And the reason I believe it's amazing is because it enables you to cross tabulate several elements of your project. So uh, several codes or uh, codes and variables. As you remember, when I previously talked about coding queries, I did show you a query that enabled us to uh, compare coding by a given value for a variable. So you may be wondering how is this different from the matrix coding query? And uh, it is different because the matrix coding query will help you, will enable you to use uh, more variables and more codes. So there are two major differences between that query and a matrix coding query. Uh, so the first difference is that uh, that query that I showed you it was more limited than matrix coding queries. So it, uh, we could, for example, see all the codes for uh, males. So let's say all the stress and anxiety codes for males. Uh, but with the matrix coding query, you can compare several variables and values and several codes. So you may see, for example, uh, the same stress and anxiety code for males and females, or uh, stress and anxiety code for males and females and those who are happy and not happy with their level of English. So basically there are just uh, many more options. And the second major difference is the result, the output of the query. So the first query, the one that I showed you before, after running the query, all we could see were the coding extracts. So for example, all coding extracts for males. And for a matrix coding query, the result is a table. So uh, as I said, it uh, helps us cross tabulate all these different elements that we choose. It's just clearer and it gives us uh, much more insight into the data. So now let's see what running a matrix coding query looks like in practice. First, I'll use our example data set to run a very basic and simple matrix coding query. And then I will switch to my other data set to show you really how complex uh, this query may be. So based on our example data set, let's say that I want to compare uh, this taking risks uh, code between actors and chefs. This was one of the facilitators, so one of the positive things. And uh, the people, the interviewed people said that basically taking risks is something that keeps them engaged and involved, something positive. But I want to see how these two professions compared, whether this was the same for actors and chefs. In order to create this query, we need to go to the Explore menu and choose Matrix Coding. Although the query itself can be quite complex and it can generate, as I said, really in-depth insights into our data, uh, the query menu is relatively simple and straightforward, which, by the way, is a great improvement from NVivo 11, where this menu uh, was much more complex. So basically, as I said, the result, the output, would be, will be a table and for this reason, here in this query menu, we have rows and columns and we need to fill these in. So maybe let's start with our uh, occupation attribute and put our chefs and actors in this uh, rows menu. And in order to do so, we need to click on the plus icon and select what we want to add. So in this case, these will be attribute values. So let's look for our uh, occupation attribute and our chefs and actors values. These were in case classifications, so under person classification, we have our, uh, our occupation attribute. So click OK, and now it tells us uh, the value that it should equal. So this will be for actors. So occupation attribute equals value actor. And now let's repeat the process and do the same for chefs. Now let's add our taken risks code to this query. So we can do it either again by clicking this plus and uh, select items and then looking for the code or which is again another improvement from NVO 11. We can do it by simply dragging this code here to the query. Now click run query to see the results. As I said, the result is a table. We can experiment with different layouts which uh, in case of this uh, basic table doesn't really make any difference. But it does if we have a big table because these colors are different for all the different uh, numbers of codes. So it's much easier to differentiate between 
uh, different codes and how many times they appeared. But you'll see this when I show you a larger and more complex query based on my other data set. I just wanted to remind you that this video comes from my course on how to analyze qualitative data with NVivo. So if you are interested in this kind of content, I will put the link to the full course in the description. And also, if you're new to this channel, like the video if you're enjoying this content. This channel is all about helping you develop and conduct research that will make an impact. So you may consider subscribing. So now let's get back to the video. So as we can see, this taken risks code appeared three times in our actor data and once in our chef data. And one important point to make here is that at the moment, the cell content shows us coding references. So if you look at this menu here at the top, it tells us what the cell content is. And another way to check it is to right click and go to cell content. So as you can see, it shows us coding references, which means that it tells us how many times this code appeared in actor data and how many times in chef data, which doesn't necessarily mean how many actors and chefs mentioned this code. So even if there is one actor that mentioned this code three times, this uh, topic three times, this would tell us three just as it tells us now. But if we want to see how many people mentioned this topic, so how, how many files were coded with this uh, code, with this taken risks code, we need to either select files coded at all classifications or uh, cases coded and choose person because uh, in our data, the same, uh, all the files that we have are also coded as cases. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. As you can see, the result didn't change because again, this is a small data set. So it looks like in each of these transcripts, the code appeared only once. As I said, matrix coding queries can uh, give us plenty of additional insight into the data. Of course, with this small data set and the small number of codes, I cannot really say that it gave me plenty of new insights, but even by looking at this simple table, I can uh, say that I'm not really surprised because it seems that uh, for actors, it was m more common to believe that taking risks is something positive, something that drives them uh, more common than in the case of our chefs, because uh, I wouldn't imagine taking risk, uh, taking risks as being something extremely helpful or positive if you're a chef. I see risks uh, more of a threat, to be honest, uh, in that job than something positive. So I'm not really surprised that for actors, it's something that maybe makes their uh, job less boring. But again, of course, this is a small data set and I wouldn't make any major claims based on this uh, result of this small table. So now that you are familiar with the whole idea of a matrix coding query and with its layout, uh, maybe I'll switch back to my larger data set, the one from the study of Polish migrants' experiences, just to demonstrate how complex matrix coding queries can be. As you can see, I'm back to my data set from the study of Polish migrants' experiences, and I prepared a query that will investigate those who are happy and not happy with their current level of English. And what I want to see is how this being or not being happy compares to the time uh, the participants spent in Scotland and also to a code uh, called fear of not being understood. So basically, several participants raised concerns, interestingly, about uh, not being understood, about their fear of not being understood, which was an interesting finding in itself, because usually when you think about somebody whose English is not fluent, uh, you kind of think that they may experience fear of not understanding somebody, but not really. you don't really think about the fear of not being understood. So the fear that somebody will not understand you. So as I said in this query, I also want to see whether this code was more common for those who are happy or not happy with their current level of English. So let's just run this query now. So in our table rows on the left hand side, we have, as you can see, those who are not happy and then those who are happy with their current level of English and then we have this uh, value for the time spent in Scotland attribute so we have uh, let's see what we have here one to two years here then we have 
2 to 5 years and then we have 5 to 11 years. And finally we have our fear of not being understood code. And now importantly, as I explained before, at the moment it shows us the number of coding references for this code. As you will see in this case it will make a difference if I change it to the files coded and this is what I want to know. So now you can see the number has changed from 15 or so to 10. And now by looking at this table we can actually uh, make some interpretations. So let's just uh, drag it back there so we can see it more clearly. And as you can see, among those who are not happy with their current level of English, the majority has lived in Scotland for two to five years. Which, uh, in light of the findings from the study, you wouldn't know it, but uh, from the findings that emerged makes sense, because those who started, who just moved to Scotland, uh, they were more likely to be happy with their current level of English, even if it was not very high, because they didn't, uh, they hadn't had much opportunity to validate that level of English. They hadn't had uh, many negative experiences, for example, so their, their self-confidence and their confidence in their level of English was still relatively high, but it tended uh, to decrease uh, with time that they spent in Scotland. And as you can see, the majority of those who uh, have lived in Scotland for two to five years were not happy with their level of English, regardless of the actual level. So even those who were initially confident in their level of English, in their English skill, started to doubt uh, themselves and uh, whether this level is in fact very good. Because if you don't know that, in Scotland there are many many different accents which sometimes are very hard to understand. So people who spent uh, this amount of time in Scotland, they actually started to doubt whether their English is good enough. And this again is clearly demonstrated by this result. And finally, if we look at a fear of not being understood, again, I believe it makes sense uh, to you just as much as it makes sense to me that uh, this uh, issue was mainly raised by those who are not happy with their current level of English. So those who are not happy, they were afraid they would not be understood. Even this uh, matrix coding query is a relatively simple one because in this data set I ran a number of queries much more complex than this. And the best thing about these queries is that they really give you ideas for further analysis. So the result itself is not something that I would base uh, any major claims on. But if we use this result and go back to our data and investigate this data or investigate the work and hypothesis that may emerge from the result of this query, then you have potentially a strong and interesting finding. So sometimes when I'm really stuck with my data analysis and I don't know what else to do, what else to analyze, what to look for, I actually start to run a number of matrix coding queries comparing different attributes and values, different codes, different groups of participants, if I have different groups of participants, uh, just to give me an idea of where to go next, so what to look for, what to pay attention to. And eventually, if after looking at the data, my suspicion is uh, confirmed, I go back to the coding query and I may actually, uh, I may actually use it in my results, so in my results chapter, for example. So in short, a matrix coding query is a great tool that has many, many advantages for your data analysis. It makes it more complex and it gives you plenty of insights into your data and quite often it may provide you with new ideas and directions for further analysis.